Sorry guys, sorry I'm late. Had to run some errands. I got the bread and milk. Honey, we're good. We're gonna survive this. We're gonna do it. We're gonna make it. By the way, these things work. These things work. And uh, if any of you guys biked here tonight, uh, this is gonna pay immediate dividends. Immediate dividends. So, um, okay. Now yeah, I'm out of shape. Um, so, uh, many of you were here last year um, and probably remember Alex Sheen and his social movement called Because I Said I Would. And Alex's movement is based on a promise keeping concept and um, where you would give up, would you make a promise and give that person a card and they'd give that card back to you after you fulfilled the promise. Sparked by um, Alex's father who passed away from cancer and Alex's father was a, a, was a promise keeper. He started this organization. And at last, uh, last year, Alex gave away, because I said I would, cards, promise cards. And um, that was a Saturday night as well. On Monday, this card was couriered to us, OK? It wasn't mailed. It was couriered. Wasn't emailed, wasn't tweeted, wasn't Facebooked, wasn't scanned or faxed, it was mailed. And um, not exactly the greenest form of delivery, okay? But, <laughs> however, we truly admire Scott's impatience. And so, uh, without further ado, I'd like to bring Scott Anderson up, who will introduce our speaker for the evening. remember writing until I die. <laughs> I have a tendency to get carried away. Uh, my wife will tell you that I often overpromise and underdeliver. <laughs> and uh, when Jay reminded me a couple of weeks ago, I thought to myself, it wouldn't have killed me to put a limit on it. <laughs> like, until I'm 80 would have been just fine. But I, I'm kidding, I actually will be a yellow jersey until the day I die. Um, and I'll tell you why. I didn't expect to get emotional tonight. But um, three months before the very first pedal to cause, my wife Erin, my beautiful wife Erin, was diagnosed with squamous cell carcinoma, um, a very deadly and rare form of neck cancer. In fact, the first time I heard about pedal to cause, Erin was lying in bed at Barnes, Big Barnes, recovering from a nine hour neck dissection to take the cancer from her neck. And at the time, we had 10 and 12 year old daughters. And we were terrified. But of course, we went right to Siteman. And after her surgery, she underwent 30 rounds of really awful radiation and lost the power, the ability to eat solid foods for three months. But she's our hero. And she fought through it. And I am so thrilled to tell you that we just celebrated, or she just celebrated, five years of being cancer free. <laughs> and I believe, and I know in my heart, that the men and women of Seidman Cancer saved your life. Seidman Cancer Center saved your life. And that's why I will be a yellow jersey until the day I die, or one of your grandkids runs me off the ride. <laughs> so it's great to see um, all the other yellow jerseys out here tonight. Jay wanted me to tell you that if you commit to being a yellow jersey or a king in the mountain when you register, that you'll automatically receive this yellow jersey to wear on the day of the ride, which I think is great news. And I think it would be wonderful if we could fill the course with yellow in late September. I want to introduce a fellow five-year yellow jersey. Uh, Terry Grieg is an athlete and an author and the captain of the largest friend and family team, Powered by Hope. And I am honored to be able to introduce her tonight. Would you help me welcome Ms. Terry Grieg?
St. Louis. A friend of mine's husband happens to be a gastroenterologist, so I'd mentioned to him um, some of these symptoms that I was having. I remember doing the colonoscopy just kind of in my mind thinking, oh my God, oh my God, this cannot be happening. He said, you know, Terry, I really don't know how to tell you this, but um, I didn't even get very far into the colonoscopy and there was a tumor. This is as bad as it gets. This is as advanced as it gets. This is what you don't want to hear. We sat down with my daughter first and told her. And um, that was, I can't think of the, anything more difficult to do than to tell your children that you've been diagnosed with, uh, with cancer. And she, I knew she would take it really, really hard. My mom and I are like best friends. So when I found out, I mean, I was completely devastated. Like, I mean, I was just, I was numb. I thought about like, is this the last Christmas I'm gonna be spending with my mom or my last, you know, birthday with her? And all just the what ifs popped in my head and my mind was just racing and it was awful. It was absolutely awful. So we cried a lot, hugged a lot the first couple of days. And then after that, we said, you know what? We're just not gonna take the attitude that we're gonna give up. We're gonna fight this with everything we have. And, um, and the pity party's over. And that was our attitude from that point on. Stage four colon cancer. Chemo, radiation, all while she was training for this race. It was her gateway to feeling that with all that was wrong, there was so much that was still okay with her life. I have found that my respiratory status has been compromised. Cycling up a hill or running up a hill, I get short of breath and, and winded. But, you know, I just tell myself I am so grateful that I can even run up a hill or attempt to run up a hill. So, you know, if I have to walk every once in a while instead of run, that's what I do. This is like a dream come true for me. I guess when, when I cross that finish line and um, I think about giving my husband and my kids a big hug, uh, I just, I can't imagine what the feeling I'm gonna have. A sense of accomplishment, but uh, uh, to me it's just gonna be a victory. Fifty-year-old Terry Greek trying to beat cancer. I feel good. None of us know how many Christmases they will share, but Terry Greig and her family will have this day forever. I'm a little bit like Scott. I didn't really expect to um, get choked up or emotional. Um, and many times it seems like it's much harder for me to talk to a group when my family's here and my husband's here tonight. So um, my might have to bear with me a little bit. But I'm here tonight. I'm here to share my why. And Jay asked me if I would uh, hopefully inspire, motivate, and challenge each of you. As you saw in the video, I am really a blessed individual. Uh, I have a wonderful family. My husband, Dave, is here tonight. My son, Kyle. My daughter, Katie. 
along with an army, many of the army members, some of them are here tonight, they're yellow jersey themselves, and, and um, my extended friends and family. So what is an Ironman? What did we just watch and see there? An Ironman is a triathlon. A triathlon is a three-sport athletic event. Um, it's a swim, bike, run. In an Ironman, the distance is an open water swim of 2.4 miles, a 112-mile bike, and then a 26.2-mile run or marathon. And I have people ask me, well, you do uh, like one of those each day, right, for three days. <laughs> And I said, oh, no, no, it's all, it's all in one day. Um, and why would I want to do something like this? Uh, well, I myself was motivated by another inspirational story. Actually, I watched the NBC Iron Man back in 2006. And the other reason is, and if you ask my husband and most of my close friends, I'm, I'm kind of crazy. <laughs> if you read my book, you'll really know how crazy I am. But long story short, back in August of 2009, I completed the Ironman Louisville, and then two weeks later, I was diagnosed with stage four colorectal cancer. I immediately sought treatment at Barnes Jewish Seitman Cancer, and wow, it's been the ride of my life. Now that was a pun, get it? The ride <laughs> of my life. Um, when I was diagnosed, the statistics showed that I had a 6% chance of surviving for five years, and today, I'm happy to say it's been five years, five months, 17 days, 20 hours, and 30 minutes. <laughs> and to that, I owe, um, I owe it to Seitman. During this time, um, you might say that I've been a little bit busy. Uh, a year, that first year was major chemotherapy, rounds of radiation, uh, colon resection, liver resection, placed on maintenance chemotherapy. Uh, a year and a half ago, I had bilateral lung resections. And since then, I've remained on maintenance chemotherapy, which is a, a week on and a week off uh, of therapy. And that has given me time to really accomplish lots of goals, Lots of things on my bucket list. Um, I've been able to complete the six major world marathons. Pretty cool, huh? New York, London, Berlin, uh, Boston, New York, and Chicago. So thank you. I have to give my husband credit. Actually, they started out with just five major marathons, and so he ran uh, the fifth one we thought was going to be London, only to find out that they, they added a sixth. <laughs> and he said, you know, they don't add majors like in golf or tennis, only in this marathon world, would they? But, uh, and then I got to do also the World Championship, which you saw the video of there of Ironman. And then I've been able also to do uh, twice the World Championship half Ironman. So, so lots of cool things on my bucket list, but probably more importantly is being here to be able to celebrate 25 years of marriage. Um, I'm watch my son, thanks. I got to uh, see my son graduate from college, and in May I'll get to see my daughter graduate from college. And uh, it's just, boy, what a blessing. About nine months into this cancer journey, my husband called me. He had gotten a call from Bill Coleman, and Bill had asked Dave if we would start a team for Pedal the Cause. He had this idea about Pedal. Bill was a cancer survivor, and he wanted to give back. And so Dave called me, and he said, oh, I just got this great phone call from Bill Coleman. And Bill wants us to form a team for this bike ride, and it's kind of right up your alley. You know, you've been riding. You've been... And I said, there... no, I have no interest in this. <laughs> You know, I'm not, I was not a volunteer person, and, and, and as I'll say a little bit later, um, <clears throat> cancer has really made me a better person. And in fact, Dave and I were talking, I asked him to help me come up with some remarks. And so he was giving me a few pointers, and he said, you know, you're really a much better person after cancer than you were before. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes the truth hurts, huh? No. Um, but anyway, uh, so that's how it all started. Bill made this phone call, and I said, absolutely not. And the next thing I know, Dave said, absolutely, we will. And here we are five years later. So for that, I'm very grateful. Um, 
I always tell people, they, they ask me about the cancer, and I said, you know what, I'm not grateful that I got cancer, but I'm grateful for all the blessings that it's brought me. Things like, things I would normally say no to, now I say yes. It's taught me to believe that anything is possible, just like that Iron Man that we saw there, that's the Iron Man motto. Even with cancer, anything is possible. Uh, it's really, it's taught me to embrace each day and to live fully. It's taught me to be a better person, like I said earlier. And I think the whole experience is just what I call, it, it's been a wake up. I live my life alive today. And for that, I'm very grateful. I would say the other thing is that um, I've learned how to ask. When you're diagnosed and you're humbled and you need help, you learn how to ask. And so I added on to that, I also have learned how to ask for money and for fundraising and for donations. So I figure if I can do it, I'm kind of preaching to the choir here, but I know we can all do it. What motivates me? It's the cancer survivors. It's the cancer fighters. It's the cancer thrivers, it's the caregivers, the families and the friends, it's the doctors, the nurses and the medical teams, and most importantly, it's those that we lost to cancer. About three years ago, I was at a team captain meeting, and I was talking to Brian Weiner, and I don't believe that they made it here this evening, probably because of the, the weather. But um, I kind of had this light bulb moment, and I decided, and it kind of came to me, and I felt it in my heart, that, you know, Pedal is really like a family. We're like a family. I don't know, if, if you're the cancer fighter in the family, in this family, you know that these people are here to help you. That's why I take it really seriously, because my life depends on cancer research. And that's why I'm inspired and motivated to be the best, the best pedal family member that I can be, which means a team captain, a board member, a volunteer, a rider, a recruiter, and a fundraiser. I know that each person in this room tonight is somehow or some way impacted by cancer, whether it's yourself, a loved one, a friend, <laughs> And I know that uh, maybe you yourself, one of you in here tonight, depends on this cancer research for your life, too. So I'm going to lay down the challenge tonight. I'm going to challenge each of you to be whatever it is you do with Pedal, the best team captain, a spinner, a rider, a volunteer, a recruiter, a fundraiser. And just really to be the best pedal family member that you can be. I guess I'd also like to say that personally challenge all of us tonight that uh, maybe, maybe, just maybe, we can reach 3,000 riders and $3 million. Wouldn't that be so cool? So I was, I was saying to somebody when we walked in, I am here tonight to pump you up. Like, <laughs> anybody catch the Saturday Night Live uh, anniversary? Yeah, that was pretty good. So I'm just going to finish by saying I, I, I believe I can, you can, and we can pedal the cause for a world without cancer. Thank you.